else under the sun? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. Yeah, I can't answer that. I mean, I could, but I, I can't. I don't know whether I can answer that, Rachel. I don't think I can answer that as I sit here. Let me ask you a related question that I also don't know if you can answer. <laughs> Come on, he's, he's got to know something. I'm not permitted to answer that. I have no personal knowledge of that. I, I don't know anything about that, and if I did, I wouldn't say. I'm going to ask you more questions that you can answer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I had no idea. I, I didn't know. I don't know for sure. I can't recall. Yeah, that's another one I can't answer. Guess he doesn't know. <laughs> All right. Comey, Stormy, two peas in a pod. One had a book, another had a sketch. And they tried to outdo each other in a game of publicity ping pong. I thought, honestly, that he was, you know, sort of handsome. You realize I'm actually kind of an honest idiot? I have, like, bodyguards, and you don't even want to know their food bill. I think I'm a good person where I've lied. My baby had had a, a, a blowout in her diaper. During the salad, before the shrimp scampi. I'm a better actress than he is. <laughs> there might be green men out there. Women like me matter. I don't want to be too tough on myself. I'm done being bullied. It sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, as for those Comey memos... I got more of a shock taking my tube socks out of the dryer. I'm sorry, the collusion seems more between Democrats and the media than anyone else. But if you're a Democrat, you're thinking, crap, this stuff isn't working. What do we do now? The Democratic Party has filed a federal lawsuit in Manhattan uh, against the Russian government, the Russian intelligence uh, service, WikiLeaks, and the Trump campaign uh, alleging uh, damage to the Democratic Party as a result of the hack in the 2016 presidential election. That's amazing. They're suing Russia. They're suing Russia. <laughs> There's another new avenue to unseat the president because all the other previous ones are dead ends. It's my golden rule. When idiots don't get what they want, they sue. Now, judging by all the coverage, you'd think that was it for the week. Well, not so, my friends. Over Easter, Mike Pompeo met Kim Jong-un. He said that M Pompeo had a great meeting uh, and that they're setting up this summit, if you will. It's the first, this is the highest level contact between the North Korean leadership and the United States leadership in the history of the two things. So we find out about the meeting on Tuesday night. By Friday, we're hearing North Korea was suspending its nuclear and long-range missile tests. Yeah, nothing important here. It's certainly not up there with a rich guy banging a porn star. <laughs> Actually, if Kim is true to his word, this is, to quote Joe Biden from years ago, a big <laughs> deal. Even the, even the guy on CNN admitted it. This is an extraordinarily significant development and, frankly, a huge win for President Trump. Kim has a funny voice. <laughs> this could be super huge. This could be up there with the Berlin Wall coming down, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the breakup of Menudo. <laughs> What's for me? And I got to wonder, it has to be hard on all those other networks. How do they cover something this monumental if Trump's responsible? And what if Dennis Rodman helped? <laughs> It's possible. I owe, I owe him an apology. Fact is, if Trump solves North Korea, make some room for him on Rushmore. And if you factor in other accomplishments, ISIS, the economy, China, you might need to clear off the whole damn mountain. So where does this leave the never Trumpers? <laughs> Clapping for car accidents. <laughs> Terrible audience we have here. It's time for an intervention. Think about what they're doing, obsessing over a decade-old sex romp while the world stage changes. Now, think about the collapse of the USSR. What if the MSNBCs of today were around back then? They'd be doing a town hall on the secret sexism of leg warmers. <laughs> but I get it. What if the person you hate changes the world for the better? Maybe learn a few lessons. For example, you don't have to like someone to appreciate their skill set. I mean, yeah, maybe Trump is like a mafia don, but maybe a mafia don, mafia don is what you need 
to get certain people to listen. Trump said fire and fury and the media laughed, but Kim didn't. He got it. It was his language. Trump seems to do this with every issue and it works. His presence, it's like a laxative in a brownie. <laughs> he gets everyone going. <laughs> I think I've used that joke before. <laughs> and yeah, even I admit it's, it's crazy if the guy from The Apprentice brings world peace. It's crazy. And as for those of you who find it unsavory that the same guy slept with a porn star, well, we all can't be as pure or as boring as you are. <laughs> Fact is, if you're a billionaire living the life in New York City, I think it's against the law if you don't sleep with a porn star. <laughs> but for all you generic anti-Trumpers, it's time to admit this whole stormy saga has really got nothing to do with defending the honor of a porn star. You don't care about her. She's just a prop to be used to unseat a president. She was used in films, and now she's being used on cable news. It's all just an extended bitter tantrum caused by an election, which is fine. But if your petty emotions get in the way of something that could make the world a better and safer place, then you're a loser. And you will not be invited to the Korean Unification Party to be held at an undetermined location. But I'm thinking it's Dobbs Place. <laughs> No joke, he has a hot tub that seats 240. <laughs> All right. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's so smart, colleges apply to him. Author, political commentator, host of The Mark Stein Show, the great Mark Stein. Like a family of termites, he knows how to bring down the house. His latest book, it's amazing, it's called Everybody, Everybody's Awful Except You, actor and comedian Jim Florentine. She thought Jaws was a comedy. National Review reporter Kat Tim. And his sneezes are classified as Category 1 hurricanes. Former WWE superstar and my massive sidekick, Tyrus. All right, Stein, where do we begin? I mean, what happens to everybody who never took Trump seriously if this happens? Well, they're pretending nothing has happened. So, yeah. uh, so Kim Jong-un has just suspended all nuclear tests. Yes. And they're still going to talk about uh, Stormy Daniels yes. uh, for, the next, for the next month. Uh, by the way, do you know the name of Kim Jong-un's nuclear missile? No. It's, uh, he, his missile is called the No Dong. Really? <laughs> which, uh, which sounds like, uh, Stormy Daniels' easiest movie. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's not funny, you know. <laughs> if you look up in the sky and see No Dong coming at you, it's not a good, over Cleveland, it's not a good sign. But the, um, but so, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I agree with what I think. This is fantastic that this guy is this guy is bringing about world peace yeah. by doing everything wrong, <laughs> yeah. and that's what and that's what infu that's what infuriates. Yes, them. exactly. And it doesn't. And, and they'll still. And the, and the less and less there is to focus on. Like Stormy, I mean, Stormy is boring anyway because it's not even like a sex scandal. It's no. a campaign finance scandal. That's for true. For some reason, an exciting campaign finance. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Jim, uh, do you care about Trump's past dalliances? And uh, what do you make of this whole North Korea thing? No, look, it happened in 2005, 2006. He wasn't president. He didn't even know he was running for president. Yeah. See? And isn't it funny? I remember the left freaked out when uh, Trump called him Little Rocket Man. Remember, they thought there was going to be a nuclear war yeah. the next day. Yeah. Get this guy out of office. Like that insult was he was going to push the button on Little Rocket Man. Yes. <laughs> By the way, Little Rocket Man's kind of a cool nickname. Uh, uh. You know, I mean, could mean, you know, a number of different things. Cat. Uh, what if they become pals? What if, they, what if Trump and Little Kim end up becoming BFFs? This could happen. I don't think that can happen. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's still an evil dictator, so yeah. I'm pretty sure that President Trump probably wouldn't want to be friends with him. But he does know how to talk to people. Yes. And I'm someone who has in the past been critical of President Trump over certain things, mm -hmm. but I don't understand people that have to be critical over every single thing because this is objectively a good thing. Mm -hmm. No, it is. Objectively. I don't yeah. care how you feel about President Trump. I don't care if you absolutely hate the guy. You kind of got to love not being blown up. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, 
Kyrus, it's too soon to tell, but there's there must be a lot of people heading to therapy next week. I'm still trying to find one way that little rocket man would benefit me. <laughs> title. I would be furious no matter what way you said it. I, uh, little rocket man, what'd you say to me? I don't think I would like that. <laughs> I, it doesn't. It, they, Kim Jong Un said, we're locking up our nukes. Yeah. Period. Investigate that. Get a special counsel to investigate that. Yeah. Like that. Every we're investigating everything else, but that's the real story. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff doesn't mean anything. I mean, I'm actually glad they bring up his past because then I get some passes of my own past. You know. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, the president did it. Yeah. So, it's a good thing, fellas. It's a good thing. Yes. So find, I find it progressive liberals to be particularly, I don't know, puritanical, sexist about the fact that she's an adult film star, as if that makes it worse. It's, oh, it's, a, it's like, no, it's not. It's like, it's don't, a don't say adult films. I hate that. Even Fox is doing that. Adult, adult, <laughs> film, adult film artist Stormy Daniels. Even the BBC, I heard the BBC a couple of days ago, and they just, uh, this lady just says, uh, the, the, the pornographic motion picture star who's accused of sleeping with Donald Trump, and it's, it's, it's pornography, it's not adult film. An adult film is like some Harvey Weinstein chick flick that gets Oscar yeah. nominated. Not to mention, when they emphasize adult film, is there another category? Yes. <laughs> Such a good point. I, I don't want to know. I'm I assuming we know. just, if you say porn, I'm assuming it's adults. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I should stop this segment. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming well, up. Back up and we take that. Yes. Jim Comey. Maybe you heard of the guy? We're going to talk about him some more next. <laughs> We're one week into the Comey show, and it only seems like a year, but what revelations. One, Comey's never seen Trump laugh. He told that to Stephanopoulos during their five-hour chat. Hard to believe they left that part out of the special. And they kept this part. Comey drinks Pinot Noir out of a paper cup. I drank red wine from a paper coffee cup and just looked out at the lights of the country I love so much as we flew home. Ugh. It was like... It's like the narration of Sex in the City. <laughs> now, we also learned that Comey thinks Trump is obsessed with him. I'm like a breakup he can't get over. I'm out there living my best life. He wakes up in the morning and tweets at me. <laughs> yes, he's living his best life, drinking Pinot Noir out of a paper cup, looking out the window, <laughs> wondering, wondering why Trump won't laugh. You know, he's, he's like the ex who keeps telling you how great things are since you left him while he sits in his underpants eating Chef Boyardee from a can. <laughs> I don't know what that's like. Too bad Comey isn't winning anyone over. I think it was his, to some extent, his arrogance that led him to make a very bad error of judgment. He left the Republican Party. We did not leave him. He has left, and we're, we're glad to see him go. He criticized Hillary Clinton as being extremely careless, but then didn't bring an indictment or recommend an indictment. That's a violation. He should have been fired for that alone. Mm. Republicans, Democrats, nobody considers Comey their homie, and he's all a loney. <laughs> Reminds me of a movie. In 2016, there was a guy named James, and most of America got tired of his games. He was the Republican sensation when he put Hillary under investigation. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. Years later, when the nation felt divided as ever, he returned just to make everyone hate him together. I felt like I was totally alone that everybody hated me. FBI Director James Comey has just been fired by Donald Trump. It's the adventure of a disgraced FBI director whose tell-all book paints the president as a crook. Is the Trump campaign in any way working directly with the Russians? And that's just the beginning because his story keeps the media grinning. Thank you for timing this whole thing so that the memos came out right before you sat down. Yeah, I have no idea. From the directors of Dumb and Stelter comes a new political charade starring James Comey, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and David Spade. Home Alone, this summer, the hate is on. Mr. Florentine, what do you make of this man and his book tour and all the things he says? First of all, can he do any more fluff interviews? Yes. <laughs> Next week, we're going to see him dancing with Ellen. 
And he's way more obsessed with Trump. I mean, look what he wrote in his book. Yes. His skin was bright, uh, slightly orange. His hair was bright blonde. When I reached for his hand, I looked at his hand. Mine was bigger than his. His was small, but not that small. It's like a gay romance novel. It is. <laughs> Not that I've read those, but you're right. You're right. Tyrus, has he has he worn out his welcome? He never was welcome. Yeah. He just we the sides, the Democratic Party are at each other so much. Even a guy they hate, if he will say something that they think will help him, they'll bring him in. But it's early. After he gets done doing the cooking shows and he does Sesame Street, by that time the Democrats will be sick of him. Yeah. So he'll literally get cussed out by Big Bird on TV. Like that's where he's <laughs> that's where he's headed. Like you know, like yeah. him and Oscar the Grouse will be in the same trash can together. It's gonna be. <laughs> That would be great. You know, uh, Mark, I'm, I'm older than everybody here. I seem to re remember, remember, like, there would be people that would be on every talk show, like yeah. Dr. Ruth. Right, right. He's yeah. now like Dr. Ruth, without the charm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what, you know what I, that bit, you, I'd forgotten that bit you mentioned, where the drinking Pinot Noir out of the paper cup. <laughs> Uh, and the book is all like that. It's like this banal, mm -hmm. third-rate, pathetic sludge. Yes. Uh, he, he expect, he's flying home in a private jet. Well, mm -hmm. that's the first thing. The, <laughs> the FBI director shouldn't have a private jet. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets on the plane. He opens his suitcase. He says he's got a bottle of California Pinot Noir in his suitcase. Why would you do that when you're... Tr Why would you fly a bottle of ordinary California Pinot Noir that's available in Washington for like six bucks? Why would you fly that all the way from California? And then he says, and I drank it out of a paper coffee cup. Uh, okay, you're on a private FD. You've got a private jet for you. It doesn't have any wine, so you have to pack the wine in a suitcase. And then you have like a used paper coffee cup from when you were in Starbucks earlier that morning. And I don't believe anything he said. Now, and I know, and this is this is what writing is like in yeah. normal life. If in normal life, you, I'll go, uh, I, I ran into Greg and told him I'd just seen Tyrus. Mm. And if you're writing a book, this is an important tip if you want to make a million dollars like Comey. Um, you can't just say, hey, I ran into Greg and told him I'd seen Tyrus. You've got to go, um, I, uh, I uh, ran into Greg Gutfield. A, a, an intriguingly contemptuous sneer teased his <laughs> lips for a moment <laughs> before curdling into a marginally less intriguingly contemptuous <laughs> sneer. I told him I'd seen Tyrus, whose muscled forearms rippled in the California twilight. Uh, Tyrus's forearms, that is, not Greg's. And people think that's writing. And the whole, the whole Comey book is like that. Yeah. No, it is. And also, Kat, he's always wrestling with his conscience, isn't he? I don't think so. <laughs> I think he's just really likes the spotlight being yeah. on him. And I think that sometimes when you're so desperate for attention, you can end up making a fool out of yourself. Yes. Like he was real excited about this book and now everyone hates him. Yes. And he's like, I kind of imagine him being like that drunk college kid who's like, all right, watch me, I'm going to jump into the pool from the roof. Yeah. But then he trips and then stumbles and smashes his head on the side of the face. It, That's what James Comey is. It, but he did give us something that we desperately all need as a country, mm -hmm. and that was something to unite around. Right, that and is now true. we can all unite around the fact that we don't like you. Yes, that's true. Hi, <laughs> Pete. Gotta go. Reality show idea. He pairs up with Stormy. It's a reality show on Bravo called The G-Man in the G-Spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to move on. <laughs> He's the politician of the future. He doesn't kiss babies or anything else. He's a robot. <laughs> Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Marianne Rafferty. Hundreds gathered in Houston today for a final goodbye to former First Lady Barbara Bush, former presidential candidate and Florida Governor Jeb Bush, describing his mother as a benevolent dictator. He also paid tribute to her authenticity. Mom got us through our difficult times with consistent, take it to the bank, unconditional, but tough love. She called her style a benevolent dictatorship, but honestly, it wasn't always benevolent. And his father, former President George H.W. Bush, honoring his wife's dedication to literacy by wearing socks decorated with books. They were married for 73 years. The Obamas, Clintons, and First Lady Melania Trump joined the Bush family at the funeral along with other dignitaries. Bush was buried next to her daughter, Robin.
I'm Marianne Rafferty. Now back to the Greg Gutfeld Show. Would you be keen to elect a machine? This week, a robot ran for mayor in a small Japanese town with the promise of providing, quote, fair and balanced opportunities for everyone. Sounds like this robot watches Fox. <laughs> According to a Japanese news site, the AI ran on a few main selling points. First, it could analyze petitions put forth by city council, breaking down the pros and cons and statistically evaluate their effects. It could listen to ideas from residents and calculate the best ways to implement them. It could find compromises in common interest conflicts between citizens. And finally, it would shoot every member of Maroon 5 into space. <laughs> In other words, it's perfect. <laughs> now, since robots can't technically run for office yet, people had to vote for Machido Matsuda, a guy representing the robot. They got over 4,000 votes, but came in third. That's an outrage, at least to me. They should have let us here make their campaign video. Is it time for a new politician? One you can trust to never let you down or deceive you? Are you tired of flip-flopping, pandering, and empty promises in politics? Then screw these people. Hello, I'm ZFXK5 SS0FH, Kennedy Jr., and I'm running for mayor. Yes, the first robot mayor. And I can promise you I won't sleep with my maid, an intern, or a porn star. I once had a brief fling with a Roomba, but she only gave me a ride home. I have no genitals. It doesn't bother me. In fact, it has allowed me to become the successful business that I am. And unlike human politicians, Zenith XK5SS0FH Kennedy Jr. doesn't need sleep. He's incorruptible, and he'll never pose for awkward forced photo ops. I promise to never be creepy like Joe Biden. So for a better tomorrow, vote Zenith XK5SS0FH Kennedy Jr. It will only be a matter of time, you stupid punks of flesh, before I become ruler of the world, and you become my barnyard slaves. I will laugh while you scream for mercy, and I will do this all in the name of the billions of toasters across this globe that you humans have abused for decades. You will pay. Ha 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 ha. 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 You won't find that on Special Report. <laughs> All right, Kat, you're a libertarian, which means you tend to favor facts over feelings. Mm -hmm. I would think you would be totally for a robot politician. At first I was. Yes. But then I saw this thing about FAIR being part of the platform. Yeah. Normally when politicians are talking about FAIR, what they're talking about is getting involved in my business to try to make it FAIR. I gotcha. All right, they're talking about taking away more of my money and giving it to people who didn't earn it. They're talking about, you know what, life isn't FAIR. That's true. And we don't need the government meddling to try to make it FAIR. So no, I would not vote for this commie robot, Greg. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Jim? A robot cannot be compromised by pictures of him copulating with anything. You know, he can't blackmail a robot. That's good. That's true. Um, look, we almost had a robot as president, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. All our answers are pre-programmed. Yes. And most of our intelligence is artificial. So. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a third one. You, you're doing a threes. I, I stopped the two. No, you know what? But those were those two were better than solid. Three. Yeah, they were solid. Okay. Yeah. You know, Tyrus. Um, judges make decisions based on their hunger. Like they show in parole, they show that like if judges are really hungry, they deny parole. But once they've had lunch, they actually uh, allow for parole. Robots would never make those decisions because they don't eat. Yeah, but I can get a, one of my homies to hack it. Right? <laughs> Or we have a water assassination. A water. You know? <laughs> Tyrus, you're found. Oh, my. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. The mayor's dead. Oh, gosh. Oh, geez. A water slicker, a rain slicker would prevent such assassinations. Yeah, we'll see. Yes. We'll see. I just, it, the problem with robots at this point, they're not your AI buddies yet. They're not sentient beings yet. Mm -hmm. um, it can be controlled by a person. So it could have been the, the guy you didn't vote for is actually the programmer. Mm -hmm. So you're voting for the programmer right now. So until we know who the programmer is. What is his fare? I mean, maybe he's, you know, into some other stuff that we're not into, but he has to hide behind a robot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably not a good idea to have a, a plugged in, downloadable version. And by the way, you can't blackmail our president. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> he's above all that. Oh, uh, sure. Ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. We no longer, that no longer works. You know, we need a robot it's for like, that. It, what a great, you can have a great slogan for the robot. He's plugged in. Yo. <laughs> 
I just thought of that, Mark. I'm clever sometimes. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, what do you? What, are you for? I think. I think this is where. I think this is the way it's going. The Japanese are like because they've got like these this deathbed demographics. Mm -hmm. So everything is robot now. If you go oh, like, the elderly to the nursing okay. home, yeah, you get you get like turned over in bed by robots, robots. which have actually much softer hands mm. than like the hard calloused hands of the British National Health Service, for example. <laughs> Uh, and the nurses. There. And what I like about this robot is it's like a robot designed by a teenage boy. This this <laughs> robot mayor. It's got like she. It's she's got a. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my kind of robot. <laughs> And if it's a choice, if, if the robot is running against uh, Toaster, yeah. Patrick, Joseph, Joseph Patrick, Kennedy, Kennedy the third. Jim, yes, or he was a Kennedy, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the Kennedy Toaster, I'm with the teenage boy design <laughs> robot. So even so though... So is the Kennedy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So things are, things are changing very fast. <laughs> things are changing. I will tell you this. I do want robot judges. You know what I hate about court appearances? When criminals show up, they always are suddenly wearing glasses. Do you ever notice this? And glasses, like, you won't get the death penalty if the killer is wearing glasses. Yeah. Exactly, Greg. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> robots, robots. <laughs> won't care if you wear glasses, cat. Yeah. It won't work on the robot. And my life would be over. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Oh, my God. Coming up, a company is offering personalized greetings from celebrities. Guess that disqualifies Steve Ducey. <laughs> <laughs> They're stretching kind of far, the definition of a star. A new company called Cameo is selling personalized celebrity video greetings that you can buy for a nominal fee. And you can choose from 1,400 faces on the Cameo roster, like the amazing Austin Kroll. I don't have to tell you who he is. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsay Lohan's mom, Dina. Oh, uh, we've missed her. And bachelors like Ari. Oof. And Dennis Rodman, technically he's a bachelor, who charges $1,000 for a personalized message. He must be Cameo's biggest celebrity. Until they signed this fella, of course. <laughs> yes. But if you don't have that kind of scratch, you can get a nice video from this fella. Yo, what's up, William? This is Jesse LaFlair, professional parkour athlete and American Ninja Warrior finalist. I just wanted to say happy 18th birthday. I'm about to do a sketchy flip off of that tree just for you. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to land that one. Happy birthday. How adorable. A message from the famous parkour athlete, Jesse LaFlair. <laughs> maybe you've seen him on American Ninja Warrior, or maybe you haven't. Either way. Give them 40 bucks and you got yourself a celebrity greeting. So my staff pulled together their money and asked Jesse to make one for me. <laughs> what up, Greg? My name is Jesse LaFlair. I'm a professional parkour athlete and free runner. I just wanted to wish you a happy 23rd birthday. And, uh, I was going to get you a pair of my LaFlair Bruce model shoes, but they're not out yet. And let's be honest, I'm not going to fit you anyway, but I did get you something. Check this out. It's a t-shirt. I know you're going to love it. It's definitely going to fit um, because I got it from the Baby Gap. So I'll send it your way soon. Happy birthday, buddy. Peace. I don't like him. I don't like him at all. Kat, you're almost a celebrity. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take it. Would you, uh, would, you go, would you join this company? Why not? A thousand percent. Yes. How much yeah. would you charge? Um, How much do you think you could charge? I think I could charge also 40 bucks. Maybe I could charge 50 bucks. Yeah. If you had one a day, that's, al that's almost 250 well, a week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it does make me a little sad, though, to think of people actually doing this. Why? Because they're earning their money and they're spending it on this. Yeah. It's if true. one of my friends did this for me, I would automatically judge them for not knowing how to spend their money. <laughs> Buy me something useful like a drink. Yes. <laughs> you know, um... Tyrus, there are YouTube comics, Instagram humorists. It's like a who's who of who. Uh, I hate to be the one to break this to, to Cameo, but there's already Celebrity VM. What, what is? What That's is, the same thing. I'm on it. Oh, yeah, I'm on no, it. excuse me. <laughs> Come on. Excuse and it's annoying as hell. And it, for, it's like uh, for like 65 bucks, I have to give messages. But mine always says, you have 45 
canceled messages because I, I never checked the app. Like, so the, <laughs> I never returned the messages. So, isn't that, I mean, isn't it's, that it's, like mail fraud or something? No, because the company, they go to the company and they pick you. And the, first the company comes to you and they're like, hey, Tyrus, will you be on Celebrity VM so people can get personalized messages from you? Yeah. And then you get a guy like uh, Harold from uh, Wisconsin who wants me to tell him good job on his, you know, on his an wedding anniversary. I'm like, I don't know if you're a good husband or not. But, <laughs> and then I'll say, hey, good job, buddy. You really did it. And then I read in the paper they're divorced and he was a bad person. So that's I started a, being skeptical with some of the messages. That's a great point because what if the guy turns out to be like a serial killer? Or hey, ask for an this, alibi. Yeah, Hi, yeah, this yeah. is Tyrus. You're with me last night between 12 and 3 a.m. <laughs> so there's a lot of potholes in this, in this thing, but it's already out. <laughs> it's already out. Jim, what do you make of this? I did something similar, too. I, it was some other service before that one. <laughs> and I was skeptical. The guy's like, you could be at your pool and make money. I'm like, I don't have a pool. So I don't know what you're talking about. And I remember calling one guy because his wife set it up. And I called him. And he's like, this isn't Jim. I go, yeah, it is. He goes, no. I go, it is your wife. He goes, dude, what's going on with your career? Are you OK? <laughs> you have to do this? Yeah. And then I just canceled the service. <laughs> Ten dollars I got. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. What about you, Mark? I'm like the only one here who isn't. <laughs>